Apology or something. And today we have something that I've done on one of my older channels a few years back, and that is football previews and talks. Today we're going to start with the opening week of the Premier League fixtures. I will be highlighting, highlighting the five most important fixtures, and I will go through the home team squads as I'm discussing each fixture. The first fixture we have is Hull versus Leicester. Newly promoted Hull versus Premier League champions. Yes, Premier League champions Leicester. It's still hard to believe. With Riyad Mahrez committing his future, Bangola Kane, their rock, leaving, how strong will Leicester be this season? They've brought in a big deal such as Musa, Mende and Zila, the goalkeeper of Hamover, but uh, proving they want two world class goalkeepers and want to keep up the push. Hull, on the other hand, are newly promoted and after major injuries, they are almost favourites to go down this time. They sign no one and own, have only Luke. <sighs> Only have a Luco go on a free transfer, which is surprising in itself. With Mares and Vardy currently here, I would expect it to be 2 0 Leicester. The second video I'll be discussing is Manchester City vs Sunderland. City had an unimpressive season last. Although, many may argue that with the Champions League semi finals, that still isn't enough, considering they didn't receive a trophy. Sunderland on the other hand were very poor yet again, and apart from the final few games, including their convincing win over Norwich. Man City have experience at an average age of 28. They have spent big yet again to win good money, and their £22.95 million move, move for Gundogan shows that they are looking to re replace Yaya Torre. Alito, who is 29, was another signing, as they seemed to lack quality on the wings last season. If they strengthen further, they could win the Premier League by a mile. On the other hand, Sunderland scraped survival. And they haven't spent any money as of yet. But they have sold Giacciarini for a mere 1.828 million, who looked lively in the Euros. So going on for this, I would expect the full-time score to be 1-0 to Manchester City, as they should still win, but they will be nervous on their opening day. The third fixture is Bournemouth versus Jose Mourinho's Manchester United. Mourinho has continued to spend big and has included the likes of Mkhitaryan and Ibrahimovic. Is this their year to go back on top? Bournemouth have bought three big signs of the summer. Draw the knife, remarkable £15.3 million. Lewis Cook, who is going to clean the team this season for Leeds, and Mousset for £5.3 million. They have a strong squad and were solid in the league last season. They have since remarkably sold Ratterich for £10 million, putting himself back in the championship. Manchester United have spent big and improved their lack lacking squad to look to get back into the Champions League race, or even better into the title race. Players like Memphis didn't perform under Van Hull, but Mourinho may be able to get the best out of them. So Mkhitaryan and Ibra's partner in transfers is Bailey for 32 million. These transfers are not losing anyone, makes the looks favourites to be most improved. After reviewing this, I would be safe to say that Manchester United should come out 1-0 winners. The fourth fixture I will be reviewing is the heavyweight for the round, first round of fixtures, which is Arsenal versus Liverpool. Arsenal always seem to have what it takes before the season, but this season I don't even see that. I, I think Arsenal finish fourth or third place once again and see no higher. Liverpool look stronger but need to challenge for top four, but will they? I'm not sure. Arsenal, first of all, have only signed one player, and that is Granite Shatka, and is a favour of region of £38 million. Decent buy, but the quality of his age. But Arsenal have been lacking a striker for years since Rob Van Persie left. And again, that may be a major problem if this isn't resolved. Liverpool, on the other hand, have rejected many 25 million bids for their striker Ben Tegi. I know that sounds ludicrous, but it's true. They have brought in Stadio Mane and Clavin to help support their attack and defensive options. Something they've needed, they have of course sold Ibe and Skirtle, but unless they find a very good striker or Sturridge can remain fit, I can't see them battling for Europe for Champions League again. And the fifth and final fixture I'll be in is Chelsea versus West Ham. This is West Ham's big season to prove to the country and the world they can be at the highest quality after loaning the Olympic Stadium and selling out 50,000 season tickets and playing in the Europa League this season. Chelsea have the former Italian manager within their ranks and look to do what to do a lot better than their dismal campaign last time. The £33 million man Batchway and Kante, the £30 million man, comes together £63 million for two players. You'd expect quality in them. They have since sold Salah, who could have made it into their first team last time out. 
They have no European football, so can focus on the Barclays Premier League, so with the likes of Hazard performing again, they may be able to push back into the top four this season. On the other hand, West Ham have everything brand new off the field, but on it they haven't made of a lot of business apart from securing Lanzini for 10.2 million after a good campaign last time out. They have a strong side and is and a very good fan base. With the likes of Pahe and Valencia, they may be able to push for top four once again. This is a very close competition. I expect the full time result to be 2 2. Thank you guys for watching. This is a longer one than it would usually be reviewing current signings and teams. Thank you for watching and see you later.